the coastal areas of Brazil, 112 million years ago, an area dotted by large lakes that supports a variety of life. On the coast itself, one can find many different species of pterosaur, such as Maradactylus and Tropiognathus, adapted for catching fish from the waves. But further inland is a completely different species of pterosaur, that at this time of year swarm here in their thousands, as this region is in the migratory path of a huge flock of Tapiara. Soaring on 1.3 meter wide wings, these small pterosaurs avoid the coasts and make for the forests and the lake shores. The normally quiet land is suddenly alive with the flapping wings and loud calls of the Tapiara as they land on the ground folding their wing membranes behind their arms. While on the ground they aren't even a meter tall, and in the more dense areas they simply disappear amongst the flora. They have landed here to rest their weary muscles. Despite the constant racket they make, some go straight to sleep. Others busy themselves cleaning their feathers or picking parasites, but others still go about getting a meal. Tapiara are omnivores, but they do not have the long thin beaks of their coastal cousins, so they are terrible fishes. Nor do they have the wide rounded jaws of a pterosaur that would specialize in scavenging, so they feed on carrion very rarely. Instead, Tapiara are frugivores, or animals that mostly survive on fruit and seeds. This is the main reason they have landed here, to feed on the various food sources that the local plant life provides, as at this time of year many plants are dropping their seeds and these pterosaurs will eagerly scoop and pluck up as many as they can. Their downturned beaks are evolved to help them carefully pluck up delicate fruit without crushing them, but also give them the strength to crack open any nuts that have a hard shell. Tapiara also have adapted eyes better at picking out brightly colored fruit, or to be able to pick out small seeds from amongst the leaf litter. The forest floor is now bustling with activity as the pterosaurs stride across the ground picking up every morsel, and the chattering never stops. Of course, taking whatever is on the ground isn't the only option. Some plants are low enough that the tapiara can simply pluck their food from the plants themselves, but most aren't low enough, and much potential food hangs in the trees just out of reach. Some try to walk along tree branches, using their crests on their heads to part any foliage in their way. Of course, some try alternative methods. A small group of young tapiara are staring at some hanging fruit two meters in the air. Each have tried to launch themselves upwards and grab them in their beaks. But the pterosaurs don't have the same grace or maneuverability that many modern birds have. They are larger and are more adapted to soaring high in the sky. In the confines of the forest, they look clumsy at best. Jumping and flapping sporadically, none of them have been able to get a bite, and half the time they jump into each other, causing two or more of them to crash to the ground in a heap. As the young individuals waste their time trying to come up from below, an older female shows them how it's done. Swooping in from above the trees, she twists her body, and angles herself so that as she passes over the youngsters, her jaws snap in the center of the fruit, and then flies up into the sky without slowing down, securing herself a meal. Her maneuver causes the remaining fruit to plummet to the ground, and the hungry juveniles scurry and squabble to pick up the remainder of what they had been trying to get at. The massive flock of Tapiara will stay here till they have effectively eaten everything the forest has to offer and their arrival also triggers other animals to feed. As a small group is foraging and squawking at each other under the canopy, they hear the approaching footsteps far too late. Bursting through the thick shrubs and ducking under branches is a duo of Irritator, Bane of Pterosaurs. The seven meter Spinosaurus rushed the group of Tapiara, and the Pterosaurs took to the wing, but some ran into each other, and many couldn't find a way to get above the canopy, so the Irritator had an easy hunt. Each one simply reached up and grabbed one Tapiara by the wing and threw them down hard into the ground, the impact killing the fragile flyers instantly. 
The carnivores then picked up their broken meals and swallowed them whole. It was a bony catch, so they would have to make quite a few more today. They slinked back into the denser parts of the forest to lay in ambush. With so many tapiara arriving all the time, they wouldn't have to wait long. As the startled individuals took the air, many of the tapiara that were elsewhere looked in their direction and then went back to feeding. In some areas, all that could be seen through the tall shrubs were the tops of their heads as they bobbed up and down. They would feed, drink, and rest here for about a week or two, and then move on to the next area in their migration, till the noisy, colourful parade had travelled most of the continent, unknowingly spreading the seeds of all the fruits and nuts they had been eating. Hello fellow travellers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a pterosaur that the public usually misidentifies, Tapiara, also pronounced Tapijara. Tapiara's first remains were discovered in 1989 in the Santana Formation of Brazil. It was a pterosaur in the Tapiaridae family that lived during the Aptian stage of the Middle Cretaceous. Its full name is Tapijara Wellhoferi, with the species name honouring German paleontologist Peter Wellhofer, while the genus name comes from Tupi, an indigenous people of Brazil, with it meaning old bean, or bean after a thunder deity. Now before we move on, I do have to clarify something. Many of you will be familiar with Tapijara looking like this, with the large head crest that creates sort of D-shape, and it has been depicted in everything from TV shows to video games, including the one I'm using right now. But this design is actually based off a closely related pterosaur, called Tupendactylus. You see, the first remains of this genus were originally assigned to Tapiara, but later research would find them to be their own unique genus, which are the ones that have the more extravagant head crests. Nowadays we only have one species of Tapiara, while Tupendactylus has two species. If you'd like to learn more about them, please view my Tupendactylus video, link in the description. So if Tapiara didn't have the famous head crest, then what did it look like? Well, Tapiara was quite small, with a wingspan between 1.2 to 1.3 meters, stood around 50 centimeters tall, and likely weighed under a kilo. The whole skeleton is extremely thin, with air sacs to make its body as light as possible for flight. It had four fingers, with the fourth being the elongated wing finger that connected its wing membrane down the length of its body. Looking at the skull, we can see the massive space before the eyes, called the nasal entorbidal fenestra, which also developed to lighten its skeleton. The eyes of Tapijara has structured called scleral rings, which are most commonly seen in animals that are active during both day and night equally. Many pterosaurs are thought to have had very good eyesight similar to many modern birds. So Tapijara didn't have the huge head crest. However, it did have a upwards facing nasal crest that was most likely only used as a display feature. The long prong at the back of the skull may be there because some sort of soft tissue structure may have stretched from the nasal crest all the way to the prong. However, this is just a hypothesis for now. So let's move on to diet. For a long time, Tapiara was lumped in with most other pterosaurs and seen as a fish eater or possibly a scavenger. Before we get into what it most likely ate, let's examine why the previous assumptions aren't likely. Looking at the skull and jaws, we can see they are quite short for a pterosaur, with no teeth and the jaws turned slightly downwards at the end. Pterosaurs that are known fish eaters, like Pteranodon, have long pointed beaks to spear fish, while others like Marodactylus have long jaws that are packed full of pointed conical teeth, perfect for snaring slippery prey. Those that feed on carrion, like I say Adactylus, have skulls more like modern vultures, built to pull back and tear chunks of flesh from carcasses. As we can see, Tapiara lacks basically all the features needed to fish effectively, and its tall crest and skull would hinder it if it tried to plunge its head into a carcass. This goes doubly so for Tupendactylus. With all this, scientists believe that Tapiara and its relatives, though possibly omnivores, were most likely frugivores, 
or specialist fruit eaters. With its short downturn beak, Tapiara was well equipped to accurately and carefully pluck small fruits and seeds from trees while also having the strength to crack open hard nuts to swallow their contents. Looking at some modern frugivore birds, we can see they often have downturn beaks, with toucans and hornbills being the most extraordinary. This raises the theory that these particular pterosaurs were Cretaceous seed spreaders. After eating the fruit, the seeds would pass through their gut and be deposited in their dung to different locations. Being able to fly, they could deposit seeds kilometers away from a parent tree. This is done by many herbivores today, and without them even realizing it. So much so, in fact, that some plants almost entirely rely on animals either eating their fruits or opening nuts, protective casings, in order to spread their seeds. So Tapiara and its relatives may have evolved to mostly feed on fruits, and unknowingly became some of the earliest known seed dispenser families. So, Tapiara a creature whose fame should go to another genus, but is nonetheless a species with fascinating implications for pterosaurs as a whole. But what do you think of Tapiara? And for my question of the week, can you think of any other Mesozoic animals that may have also been frugivores? What lesser known pterosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.